I didn't know what to expect, but it was amazing. The one-on-one -on -one interaction and how they moved you around and I just kept you intrigued. It was when it's like, what, what next? It's, it's more entertaining than the New York Knicks, that's oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> These guests are talking about It's Alive, a new Frankenstein immersive experience. From the Haunted Traction Network, I'm Philip, and this is day 12 of our 61-day Hauntathon, counting down to Halloween. Today is Sunday, September 12th, and there are 49 days until Halloween. Coming up on today's show, we're on location at It's Alive to find out what the show is like. Stay with us. The best way you can support us this Halloween season is by sharing our Hauntathon with someone you think will enjoy it. And to follow along to our Hauntathon, sign up to our weekly newsletter at hauntedattractionnetwork.com. And now, let's get back to It's Alive. First, let's try and figure out what It's Alive is. So It's Alive is a show about Mary Shelley. She had many poets and friends in her lives, all of whom died pretty tragically and horribly. And in this show, Mary's going to ask you, help her take their body parts and sew them together into a grief monster that she brings back to life and faces down. That's Devin Armstrong, director and co-writer for It's Alive. You're very much a part of that process. So you might be asked to maybe dip, dig up a grave or you might be asked to hold someone's tongue in your hand and sew it into something. But it's an individual experience. So be expect to be broken up from the people you came with. Expect... Uh, all sorts of different experiences than they had, and you may get a one-on-one -on -one scene with an actor who may give you a gift. All this began, if it began at all, with a wager. But there, a challenge. Byron, Polidori, Mary, and her husband, Shelley, would write a ghost story. Mary's became a book, very claimed. The first impulse for her book came to her in a dream. She saw through the moonlight flooding through her room a hideous phantasm of a man being brought to life by the workings of some powerful machine. This Mary Shelley, my creator. A young woman with a ravenous intellect and untamed imagination. We will trespass on her consciousness, eavesdrop on her memories. You will come to know her as I am. Perhaps through her, you will come to know yourself. When you approach a show like this, knowing that the audience is not going to have a linear experience, we aim for a thematic experience. So everybody has a different piece of the story. So you can't say, you know, it's A, B, C, you know, follows like that. Instead, we picked a theme. We, we decided to write about uh, Mary Shelley. Last time we did Edgar Allan Poe. So this time we decided to write about Mary Shelley. We found that the most fascinating aspect of Mary Shelley's life was this this amazing literary circle that she basically created and was such a central part of. And then I co-wrote the play with my dad, actually. And then we said, okay, where's the story in this? And we started realizing that she was sort of slowly over the course of her life left alone uh, and that all these amazing, fascinating people died and left her. And then we drew that parallel to Frankenstein. Like what, what would happen if Mary took all these people she was in love with and made uh, took their body parts and made them into a monster that she brought back? Are you sure you want this? Yes. I have assembled what you asked. Have you thought this through? The time for thinking is over. This is the final piece. I know where it must go. Be careful, man. So every character in every different scene addresses that theme on some level with you, the audience member. And then you have just this sort of barely like skeleton frame of a play on the outside of that that everybody gets to see so they can understand something overall about, about where the story goes. How did you decide what the through line needed to be in order to maintain the coherency you know, of the plot while still allowing 
so many individual breakout scenes? Uh, so there are three scenes that everybody sees. There's 22 people per performance, although what the audience doesn't know is that those 22 people are actually broken into 11 and 11. So in essence, it's really an 11 person show. And that way we'll be able to pay special attention and keep all the scenes intimate and small. It, it's not actually set in stone. So it's not like, you know, person one, person two, person three or whatever. It is largely up to the actors and how they see you and how they choose to grab onto you and take you, pull you off for one-on-one -on -one or something like that. At first glance, I thought Devin's team just adapted Frankenstein to make it immersive, but they wrote an entirely new script from scratch and not about Frankenstein per se, more about Mary Shelley's journey to writing Frankenstein. And I was wondering why do such a big task? Whenever we come into writing something or telling a story, it's it's funny where you start and what takes you by surprise. And I think we came in intending to write a scary story about Frankenstein and accidentally ended up discovering this whole crazy, amazing world. And, and that just sort of stole us. That, that was what was fascinating to us. We were like, wait a minute, the original vampire story and Frankenstein, yeah, yeah and, and Fra Byron's Fragment all came from one night in Lake Geneva. Okay, that's our story, right? So that's what we, that's what we chose to focus on. And then, and then, of course, there was like that metaphysical aspect of, okay, we wanted to get inside Mary's head and then marry those two things together, like the, the story of Frankenstein itself and the story of the creation of it and her loved ones. But yeah, so ba basically we started researching and the story just sort of ran away with itself and pulled us in that direction. And that's how we ended up with what we ended up with. All of the characters were real people. They all uh, died how, we, how they died in the play, except for Victor, who makes his way out of Frankenstein and is sort of Mary's Do voice in her head. As a company that goes into spaces like this, we want to pick something that's right for this space. And it showed us something about Mary that we didn't know before, which was her... Not just, just that she wrote Frankenstein, but this rebellious, outlaw, literary genius. Shelley died and his work was just a mess. And she put it all together and gave us the poems that we have now. Found out that she edited as much of his work as he did of hers, that they had this, this amazing literary connection. And that drove it. Check out Outlaw Romantics. And then there's also The Young Romantics, which is another book that we used as our source material. And then, of course, Mary's notes when she was traveling, Polidori's notes when he was spying on Byron, Byron's Ch Child Herald's pilgrimage, the poetry itself, and just sort of like yeah, researching the crap out of everything and then narrowing down to, a, to find that story in there. Not just Frankenstein, but this world, how she made it happen, how it inspired her to make it happen. Devon's production company has been around for about a dozen years, but this is only their second attempt at writing a script from scratch. We started in a parking structure in downtown LA. We'd never actually been in a theater. And in the beginning, that was budgetary. We had no money. So we lit our first show with, we were in a parking lot. So we lit it with car headlights and we played the sound cues through the car radios. And that's where we started. We're still not a big, <laughs> big theater company financially and everything like that. It's very much, you know, passion project kind of thing. We had been doing a lot of classical stuff because you don't have to pay for the rights. And we had been doing a lot of, you know, in the park presentation style things and, and everything like that. But we finally decided that we should take a leap at making our own material. And that's where our first sort of major play, The Assassination of Edgar Allan Poe, came from. And it, it sort of really took us off guard how into it people were. This is by far the most challenging play I've ever directed. You have to challenge yourself as much as humanly possible in order to rise to that challenge artistically. The more creative and insane you get, the better you get at problem solving for that insanity and the cooler, weirder, crazier thing you can make for an audience. And it's scary and it's difficult and it's hard. And every time we go into this, I feel sick. Like, <laughs> but pretty much half the time I'm, I'm putting the show together, I'm like, it's not gonna work until it does. It's, there's something magic about theater. All right, that's all fine in theory, but let's hear what some actual guests have to say about the experience. When it said interactive, that sold me. I don't like to necessarily just sit there and, you know, have people just talk at you. The walking, the experiencing, the touching, I mean, even the touching, don't be, you know, worried about the touching. It's, I mean, they don't do too much of it, but just that that personal, you know, sort of feel to it is what makes it different oh, yeah. than anything else. You oh, for me, it's like, you're like, you're part of the movie. It's like, you're in it. Yeah. Instead of just watching, you're actually in it. It's just amazing. And like these, these performers are amazing how they remember their scenes. Oh my goodness, I don't know how they do it. God bless them. What was the most memorable character to you? One of the sisters. It was actually her and I just together. She goes to the back and she pulls her eyes out and she hands them over to me. So that was really cool. Oh wow, so that's pretty cool. I didn't get to experience that. So yeah. it depends, you know, the night that you come, you get to experience something different. 
So that's pretty awesome. Uh, definitely the blindfolding. I'm not very good when my senses get taken away. Touching of unknown substances was definitely a, a line that I wasn't really sure I was going to cross, but I'm trying to get in on the experience. What caught me off guard was it just felt like I was part of the show because like these actors were actually like asking me questions. They were saying, hey, come along with me. So they literally take you along on the ride with them, you know? And good news, listeners. It's Alive has been extended for additional shows throughout the month of October. We are moving this show up to Altadena Mausoleum at Mountain View Cemetery. So we're very excited to do the show up there for the entire month of October. So from October 1st to October 31st, we have 20 performances. We're stoked. It's our first time up there, and it's a really, really cool spot. And it's going to change the show completely. It's going to make the show much more like metaphorical inside Mary's head. So this really is going to take place firmly inside Mary's head, and we're going to have to adapt the play to meet the standards of the new space. For instance, at this museum, we have realistic sets with realistic tables and chairs and clocks and paintings. In the mausoleum, there's nothing but with marble, uh, long marble hallways that echo like crazy. And the actors have been saying, what's going to happen? Aren't we going to hear each other yelling from other rooms? Isn't it going to echo? There's a saying uh, with my theater company from the start, if you can't fix it, feature it. And that's been like our motto all along, right? If you're in a parking structure, don't build a theater in a parking structure, light the show with cars, use the car radios to play the music, drive cars on stage and have actors get out of the cars and start their scene because you can't fix it so make it part of it so what we're going to do in the mausoleum is embrace that echo when the cast is talking to each other and they hear those yells down the hall now we're really firmly inside mary's imagination inside mary's head so we're just going to embrace that environment and, and it's like the screams of the other people that are like echoing through her mind please check out the show we're stoked to see you uh, come See an experience, hopefully that's something you've never seen before. Take you out of your take you out of your element and and find something new. <laughs> Today's show is produced by me, Philip Hernandez, and recorded live on site at the Heritage Square Museum in Los Angeles, California. Post production on the show is by David Swope. We're counting down to Halloween with our 61 day hauntathon. Our hauntathon is made possible through generous support from Gantam Lighting and Controls. We'll see you back here tomorrow and every day until Halloween. I'm going to leave you with one final recommendation for It's Alive. Yeah, it's a great, great way to meet people, you know? <laughs> Better than hands. <laughs> this is a Haunted Attraction Network production. <laughs>